lots to talk about. Okay, in some of my teaser videos, I showed a couple of sensors that I had installed and had tested them. They tested fine. Uh, they're single infrared reflective sensors. They emit infrared and they look for a signal back. In practice, this became a problem. The bottom of the trains are black and they're irregularly shaped. So trying to get the right distance and the right uh, angle was a problem. Plus, sometimes the trains would park so that the gap between the trains was over it. Uh, and that would clear the block because it no longer sensed the train. So today I've spent a lot of time tweaking and what I've done is I've split the infrared emitter and detector into two pieces and I have them temporarily just set up here for testing. I've got an emitter that shoots diagonally across to the receiver. No matter where this train is or how fast or slow it's moving, it doesn't detect any gaps. Each block is run by an Arduino. I know I could put it all into one Arduino, but I'm not any good at programming. So what I want to demonstrate here, and we're going to do this one block at a time, this is the station block. Each of these clusters of lights tells me what state each block is in. So for the station, this red and blue means holding. And you could see here on the break, I've got red and blue because this train has come in and is waiting to come into the station. Green for the lift means that the lift is clear. So I can hit dispatch here and what's going to happen, it's going to, this light is going to go blue, which is kind of an exiting status, meaning the block is still occupied, but it's trying to get rid of the train. Once this clears and goes green, it tells the brakes that it's clear, you'll see the brake will go to blue as it tries to exit and clear. Also, once this leaves and this goes from blue to green, it'll tell the next block it's occupied. And so it's all gonna happen kinda quickly. So watch these three status lights. Blue here, it goes green. It told the brake to clear. It went green. The lift is currently occupied. Blue means it's exiting. Now it's clear. I have it set up to manual mode, so I have to hit the dispatch button each time. Now I want to show you what happens if there's an error. So I'm going to let this train clear the block. You'll see it's red right now. It'll go to blue, and now the lift block is clear. Lift block is clear. The tracks and brake are occupied, not holding. The station is still holding. So I can dispatch station because the lift is clear. But once it comes up to the sensor, it's gonna stop. Because the next block, the tracks and brake, have not cleared. The block that the train is in now is still occupied, and it's red here. I'm just going to lightly push it up into the brakes, and then the motors will engage. It'll, it's just rolling right through. Notice it didn't hold it this time, because the block ahead was clear. That was close. Uh, one of the things I'm having trouble with is I don't have a precise way to stop the trains. I didn't need it when it was one train. So I'm gonna spend some time and find a, a little, little more effective way of stopping the trains. I'm gonna set this to automatic. And now, Here's how the automatic logic works. Once the train leaves the lift block now, a random number is generated 
and that random number is somewhere between 5 and 25. And that's my dispatch time. So the train will sit and wait as little as 5 or as much as 25 seconds before dispatching. The dispatch button still works during this time if I want to manually send it through. But as you can see, the train is dispatched, the brake is cleared, the station is now occupied. So all that's left is to hide the wires. I'm probably gonna put all the Arduinos in the con control box. And what I'm thinking of doing is making a little light stack of each of these lights. Uh, one in the station showing the lift status so there'd be a red light in the station right now and then it would turn blue and then green and then the next one for example this red light maybe up here at the top of the lift so you could see that the next block after the lift is occupied and then the station status lights somewhere here on the brake run I've started cleaning up the table. Um, I haven't moved any lights onto the station, uh, onto the model yet, but I want to point out I have built these these towers that hold the infrared light on one side. You might be able to see the infrared glow, and then the receiver is on this side. It looks just like that box, but over here. So I've got that here at the brakes. And I built the same thing on the station. If you come over here, once this train goes out. Oh, I set up these, these lanes as just a test um, to make sure I'm stopping the train at the same spot each time. I found a way to precisely stop the train and that is applying a short across the motor when I want to reliably stop the train in the same spot each time. Now I'm taking this off because I want to show the, the same sensor stack. I've got one piece here, one piece on the other side. I'll get this train out of the way so you can see this is probably the receiver on this side and the emitter. Oh no, I saw it, the emitter and receiver. I added the flat bars into the Millennium Flyer train. And these guys open and close. Please don't get back. So they all open and close. Yeah. Excellent. I've added these light pods in various places around the track. Green means the next block is clear. Red means it's occupied. Blue means the train is exiting the block. And red and blue together means a train is holding in the block, waiting to exit. So this pod here is the status for the light, the lift hill. So back here on the brake run, this is the status for the station. So this train will sit here and wait until that turns green. I'll go ahead and dispatch. Same with the lift up here. This light pod refers to the track and brake run. Uh, that's considered one block. Once it leaves the lift hill, from here, to the end of the brake run is one block. And as long as that is green, it will allow the train to go over the edge. Now I'm gonna stall the train. Never made it to the brake run, so it has not gone under holding. We're gonna dispatch because the lift is clear. And so I want you to see that this train will continue up the lift till it reaches that sensor and it will hold there until that goes clear. 
So we're going to move this up into the brakes, let it go into the station, and that is cleared. After moving all the electronics into the box, I've added some additional buttons. I've given my auto manual switch a bicolor light. So when it's on auto, that light is green. And then when it's on manual, the light is red. What I've added here are set and clear buttons for each uh, block. While messing around with this, I found if I remove a train, I'm going to dispatch a train stored on the track. And as you can see, it brought the train into the station as it should, but now it thinks the lift hill is occupied. And that's evident by the lift hill running in this red light right here. I can move this back to run, but I can't dispatch because as far as the system is concerned, the lift is occupied. So I can clear the lift and now I can dispatch. There's another reason I added the set and clear buttons. So if I were to turn on the system with the train on the station, I'm sorry, on the lift, uh, it doesn't know what to set anything in. Currently, the station powers up and is trying to pull in a train uh, thinking that it's occupied. That's what I told it to default to is occupied. So I'm going to park the train. So now it thinks there's a train holding in the station, but the lift is clear, except it's not. And prior to this, I couldn't have a way to start the lift. So now I could set the lift without dispatching the station. And what this is gonna do is cause the train to stop on the brakes, even though the station is clear, because I told it it's occupied, but now I can clear the station and it'll bring the train in. Now it'll operate as one normal system. But let's say I wanna bring that second train in. So I turn the transfer track over, bring the, the train out, and I'm gonna automate this at some point. Set the track to run. Well, I could turn on the lift here, but I've also added a sensor at the bottom of the lift. So as the train crosses that sensor, it automatically starts uh, the, the lift. Um, the next thing I wanna show is for testing purposes, I can set up the block. So I'm gonna hold occupied, dispatch the train, and so I tell the station there's something in it. And because the brakes haven't advanced and the uh, lift has reached the top, it's not gonna go. But I'm going to clear the station and everything will happen all on its own. I'm going to clear the station, it'll pull in the train on the brakes, which will clear the brakes and allow the lift hill to go. So one button clearing the station, and so I could do the same, I'm going to dispatch, let the station clear, but I'm going to set the brakes. So I told the system that the brakes are occupied. If I try to dispatch, it won't. It will not dispatch a train because the lift is occupied. The lift isn't advancing because I told the brakes are occupied. So I can clear the brakes and it releases off of the lift, and then I could dispatch, and everything's back to normal. So I want to show inside the box. I've got my three Arduinos, my relay board. I've got a bunch of speed controls uh, and, and direction switches. Underneath is the power supplies for everything. And I've got a 66 punch down block, which brings all of the sensor and motor wires into, into this box using a uh, Amphenol telephone style connector. And that's on the back of the box here, it runs over and connected the same thing on the table. 
So I've got that up underneath as well. I think that's everything. Thanks for watching.